Good day folks, some of you may have seen my video I uploaded last week about the new DJI Fly app update. DJI updated it to version 1.1.6. They added some new advanced gimbal control settings where you can adjust the sensitivity of your gimbal and they also added some new battery information. Now during that video I also demonstrated some other new features that I found, that being a new redesigned A-Pass and obstacle avoidance interface and also the ability to turn off sideways flight. In that video I also made reference to a new firmware update that was available. But it wasn't long before people down in the comments were mentioning that that firmware was not available for them and some of those new APAS features were not available either. After some investigating and talking to other creators we determined that it was that my drone was getting some beta firmware. But the good news is for those of you who have been waiting for those new features, today DJI updated the firmware of the Mavic Air 2 and those new features are now available for everybody. But not only that they've added some other interesting new features such as digital zoom. So let's just jump right in and take a closer look. So now in this video, I'm not going to go over the advanced gimbal settings because I did cover that in my previous video. I'll include a link down below where you can go and check that out. I'll also include a card up at the top here. But what we are going to take a look at are some of the new features that are available in the new firmware update that was made available today. So let's just check the firmware version. If we go over to about, you can see here we're now on firmware version 1.00.0340. So that is available now to everybody and that's going to allow you to get some of those new updates. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the new obstacle avoidance and a pass settings. If we click our settings at the top there, you can see right away under safety, we have this new graphic. It's called obstacle avoidance action and it gives us some different options that we can do for a pass and for obstacle avoidance. Right now I have my controller set to normal. You can see here it gives us some options. Right now it's set to break. So that way if we come up to an obstacle such as a tree, the drone's just going to come to a stop. We can go over and set it to bypass and you can see there by the graphic it's now going to go around the obstacle. What it's going to do is it's going to scan the environment and find the best route around it. And that could include going beside it or even up over top of it. The other thing we can do is turn it right off. Now your drone will still beep when you get close to an object to give you that audible warning but the drone will still continue and could potentially crash into the obstacle. So you do have to be careful with that setting. Now the characteristics of obstacle avoidance will change depending on what flight mode you have it in. For example, when I switch it over to sport mode, you can see there that we can't change any of the settings. So when you're in sport mode, obstacle avoidance is not available and a pass is not available. If we switch it over to tripod mode, you can see there, now it only gives us the option to break or to turn it off. So again, when you're in tripod mode, the only option you have is to have it break, come to a stop. You don't have the option to go around the object. Now, another new setting that they've added is this option over here at the side. I don't know if you can see it on there. Now, if we press on it there, you can see it says safety assistant mode, sideways flight off. What happens there, that allow us to move this drone forward and backwards using the right control stick. But if we try to fly the drone sideways, we're not going to move at all. That's a good option for pilots because sometimes that's where you can run into trouble. The drone doesn't have any side sensors so that way you don't have to worry about accidentally flying into something sideways. You can also get to that setting by again clicking your settings. You can see here we have disable sideways flight as a toggle that we can turn on and off. Now one of the biggest new features I think that they've added with this update is the ability to shoot zoomed in video. Now it's not an optical zoom, it's just a digital zoom, but uh, the results actually look pretty good. And to get to that new feature, you can see here, if we click on our video settings, you can see here we have some new options. We have 4K wide, we have 4K zoomed, and then our other recording modes. So you can see here we're in the normal 4K wide mode, but now let's switch it over to 4K zoom. You can see there it automatically zooms in a little bit, but we can actually zoom in even farther. So you can see that it actually does a pretty good job. There it is at one times, and there it is at two times. So that's kind of neat, and the quality still looks pretty good. Now you have two times zoom when you're shooting in 4K and 2.7K, but if we switch it to 1080, you can see here, we can zoom in four times. One times, two times, three times, and four times. So that definitely is a really nice feature if you want to get in and get close to some action without putting your drone in harm's way. I know a lot of people will really make good use of that feature. They've added some new features to shooting hyperlapses. You can now shoot in 4K. And now when you're filming a waypoint hyperlapse, you can actually add up to 45 waypoints now. On top of that, you can now save it to a task library to go in and fly at a different date. And that's very useful because if you're setting 45 waypoints, you're going to basically use up your whole battery just setting your waypoints. What that allows you to do is set all your waypoints, 
land the drone, put a fresh battery in, and then film the hyperlapse. I'm going to do a more detailed video showing you that in action in a future video. Now a couple other things DJI has updated is that they've enhanced the FPV mode when flying FPV mode. Again, if you're not quite sure what FPV mode is, I have made a video demonstrating that. Again, I'll include a card up at the top here, and I'll also include a link down in the description of this video where you can go and check that out. Now, a couple other things that DJI did update that they've made note of in the release notes. They've enhanced sport mode, which should allow you to get better flight video quality. And lastly, they also mentioned that active track has been updated when filming vehicles at a low altitude. It should perform better. So that is the new update for the Mavic Air 2. Let me know down below if you've played around with any of those new features and what you think of them. I want to thank you for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.